take you on a journey through how I created the first independent multi-sensory art exhibition made accessible for all to experience. I actually didn't realize the impact I created until months after my exhibition had passed. But first, I would like for you to close your eyes and listen to a few seconds of my film, I Am More Than My Hair. If you're tempted to peek, I please ask that you keep your eyes closed to get the full experience, okay? I've had to redefine beauty. Because if you look to the outside world or to the media to find what's beautiful, I'm certainly not that. The beauty industry and the magazine business are culpable in a Genocide. Okay. Were you able to visualize what was happening on the screen with your eyes closed, so listening in? Yes, no? Okay, hold that thought, we'll get back to in a minute. In October 2019, I had the screening of my first film, I'm More Than My Hair. It's a documentary about women who've experienced hair loss due to a health-related condition, and their journey of self-empowerment to see beauty beyond the media standards. It was initially a photography book. My background is photography, that's how I got started in the arts, but I expanded it into my first film, which is another long story for another TEDx talk. Um, so one thing to know about uh, the purpose of the work that I create as an author, film director, and now a tactile artist is impact. That has always been extremely important to me. I want those who come into contact with my art to walk away with a sense of they learned something new or they would like to create a positive shift or change in their lives or thinking. Um, this is also what I did with I Am More Than My Hair. I wanted to bring awareness to alopecia, which means hair loss, and that a woman who's bald is not always necessarily connected to a cancer diagnosis. Um, Okay, so back to the screen, and it was absolutely amazing, and honestly, more than I had ever imagined it to be. The audience was engaged in conversation. There were moments of, of laughter and moments of tears. But one of the women in the audience, Marguerite Woods, someone who is very near and dear to me, she is also a participant in my project. You see her picture out there. Um, she's blind. And Marguerite actually lost her hair as a side effect of medication that she was taking to prevent blindness. I knew her perspective would be different because she's blind, and because I've always valued Marguerite's opinion, I wanted to get her thoughts on my film. So I asked her, you know, Margaret, what do you think? And she said to me that uh, I can feel the energy in the room, which was absolutely phenomenal, but because your film did not include audio description, I could not visualize it. And I was like, hold on, audio description? We've never had that conversation. I've, I've never even heard it before. What, it, you know, what does it mean? And I didn't know it at that time, but her response has forever changed my perspective and the process for how I create art. So she went on to explain what it is, and just for you to know, audio description is a form of narration used to provide information surrounding the visual key elements of the media, in this example, film, for the benefit of the blind and visually impaired. Did everyone get that? Okay. At that, I didn't get it at first, so I figured it's better for me to show you than to try to explain. So I'll show you the same segment of my film, but this time it's with audio description. Um, again, I want you to please close your eyes to get the full experience and just listen, pay attention to the audio describer, okay? A hand flips through a photo book, I Am More Than My Hair. Essays, photos of bald women of all ages and ethnicities. I've had to redefine beauty. A montage of Caucasian women in TV shaming commercials from the 1950s through the 2010s. Sheila Bridges. Because if you look to the outside world or to the media to find what's beautiful, I'm certainly not that. The beauty industry and the magazine business are culpable. Jamie Curtis, face still, eyes cast downward. Genocide. Flashes a no and smile. All right, were you able to visualize it better with the audio description? I was like, why did I know about this before? This is amazing. I felt like it was a whole new understanding that I had. But um, has anyone ever heard the saying, when you see something, do something? Okay, well, that's exactly what I did. Um, bear in mind, my mother's disabled, and she was left with paralysis on the left side of her body when she, just when they, she suffered a stroke at the age of 25. I don't know my mother without a stroke. And accessibility was not optional for her. It was imperative for her mobility. And now that I knew that it was possible in film, there was absolutely no way I couldn't include it. I actually felt a duty and responsibility as an artist to include it. So I drilled Marguerite questions. Who can do the AD for me, which is short for audio description? How much would it cost? And unfortunately, cost is a factor in, any, in the production of any project, especially film, because it's so expensive. Um, so she connected me with someone who then connected me with someone else, and then so on and so forth. So that's how I met Cheryl Green. That's the voice of the audio describer you just heard in my film. Another filmmaker connected me to her. Um, so fast forward, several months after completing the AD in my film, I found out that an exhibition proposal I submitted several months prior had been accepted. And as 
excited as I was to have this beautiful space and newfound understanding of accessibility, I knew that I had to figure out a way how to make it accessible. So I reached out to the same people who made recommendations prior, including Marguerite, because I knew that I would need as much support as possible to pull off an exhibition of the caliber that I had in mind. The challenge was I kept on getting recommended to the same people in the circle because no one was exactly sure how to do it. And the one company that did print raised prints, which is a 2D to 3D, um, said that the cost of me to print the images that I envisioned would be about $35,000. Um, and that was not an option, so I had to keep on trying to figure this out. And then lo and behold, just several weeks after setting my intention for this exhibition, I found out that I received, I was awarded a $25,000 grant to cover my exhibition expenses. So with that, I knew it was possible. I knew that Cheryl, the same uh, audio describer you just heard, could do the AD, so that was covered. I found someone to create QR codes for me, which were placed on the image description, which you can also see outside, that you can scan with your cell phone and you can hear the audio description like this. So I want you to actually hear what it sounds like. Here, of all the African American women kneels on one knee, her elbow resting atop the other knee, her chin gently set on her hand, and her eyes resting nearly closed. And then she also provided me with discovery pens, which are audio pens that you can scan the mechanism on the exhibition flyer, and you can hear the description of the image like this. And then through research, I discovered that I could print a lithophane, which is a three-dimensional image that you can feel as you hear the description of what it looks like. So a 3D printing company printed the lithophanes for me. Um, this is actually what it looks like in, in production. Um, I envision having each lithophane accompany each picture uh, for the benefit of those with vision loss. And as you know, there are various, vision, there are various types of vision loss. Um, so I thought it would be really cool to add a glow effect. I don't know why that thought just came to mind, but um, for those who can see it best with the light. Uh, so I found the light panel company to custom create light panels that were thin enough to go behind the lithophane and they both fit together inside the picture frame. Um, and this is the end result. You'll also see an image outside there. Um, the Lighthouse, Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired created braille description of each image for me. The audio described and closed captioned version uh, played on loop the actual, my, uh, the audio described and closed captioned version of my film trailer played on loop throughout my exhibition. One thing to note, um, it's really important when using closed caption that you include all the sound in the media for the benefit of those with hearing loss so they can have the full experience. Uh, and then, um, now imagine that you are in a wheelchair and the words of the exhibition are too high for you to read or the image is too hard for you to see or to feel in this case. Do you think that's fair? No, it's not fair. <laughs> so I, um, we made sure that all of my artwork was no higher than 54 inches high, just something to bear in mind. Um, really important when thinking about the size of your artwork so that it's available, it's accessible for visitors in a wheelchair. And then in dedication to the two women who had passed away of cancer that were in my project, I really wanted to do something different for them. Um, I had an idea, I was like, I feel like it would be great to create a sculpture you know, of the two women. I don't know a sculpture artist, but then don't you love how the universe is always working and making connections? Especially when you set your intention, this one thing that I learned through this process is why it's really important to set your intention because not only did I win this grant, but while figuring out all the pieces of the puzzle to my exhibition, I saw a social media post about a hyper-realistic prosthetics artist based in Nigeria. Um, so this is John Amanam. He, uh, he, I figured if he can create these body parts to look so realistic, and he has a whole story behind how he created these, I figured he can create the sculptures for me. So I hired John to create the sculptures of the two women, um, Debbie on the left, Katie's in the middle, and he also created one of me uh, to accompany my artist statement. And in the end, while figuring out all the pieces of the puzzle and putting it together, this is how my exhibition turned out. And you can keep your eyes open for this one. Welcome to Sandy Spring Museum, the exhibit I Am More Than My Hair by Alicia Cunningham. Large, vibrant portraits hang on sun-dappled walls alongside 3D relief versions and busts. I was really pissed that everyone criticized me about cutting my hair. In response to the criticism, I decided to do a tribute to women who have either lost their hair or decided to just cut their hair. I really primarily focus on women and imagery and dispelling the myth of a beauty standard. Hi, my name is Alicia Cunningham, and I am the filmmaker, photographer, and the artist of I Am More Than My Hair exhibit at Sandy Spring Museum. I Am More Than My Hair is a collection of images I photographed. In total, it was about 64 women and girls who have lost their hair due to a health-related condition. 
And it also includes uh, images of women who cut the hand solidarity of a loved one. The book includes the images of each person and then the story of how they lost the hair. What I really wanted to do was educate people about alopecia, which means hair loss. The exhibit does have the accessibility component, so when you scan the QR code that's on the story with your phone, you can hear the story. Some women were able to participate, some was just the audio describer that told their story and the description of the image. So as you feel the lithophen, which is a 3D relief print, it's the exact replica of the photograph, but it's a raised relief so that you can feel the textures and you can kind of feel the shape of what the image looks like as the audio describer is telling you what the image looks like or what the woman is doing in the picture, what's her background. You can use the audio pen and go through each uh, image description and it'll tell you the same that's in the story that's accompanying the images. I really just wanted to show that despite what we see in the media, because I know there's a lot on, on makeup and beauty and texture and skin color, everything, I just wanted to show that with or without hair, you know, that we're still beautiful and to, sh and to prove it, which was triggered for me really just being mad, you know, by the response. So that's, that's how it came about. The exhibit opens today, which is Friday, March 19th, and it goes until September 5th. Thank you, thank you. Um, so in the end, I learned that Marguerite's blindness actually helped me to gain sight. It was her perspective that actually shifted the way that I see. So for the artists in the room watching now or those at home watching on their, on their screens um, and would like to do the same but may not have a $25,000 grant, simple, something as simple as adding audio description and closed caption to your film, media, or other forms of art is highly impactful, it's, effect, it's effective, and it's affordable. So hopefully now you see something, you do something. So get out there and make your art accessible. Thank you for having me. <laughs>